So here's where we're starting. Is sometimes you guys will come in the room and you'll have what's called a silent starter or, or bell work. So a silent starter or bell work is stuff that you come in, you'll see it on the board, and right off the bat, boom, you just start it. Okay? And a lot of times it's going to be a writing prompt. A lot of times at the beginning of classes, from here forward, you'll come in and we'll either have a, have a writing prompt on the board or it'll say silent reading. Okay? So it's extremely important that you bring in your, uh, your notebooks every single class and you bring your independent readers every single class because we're going to be using them a lot, especially for these starters. So when we do the writing, I, I have a little acronym that I call it, uh, which is SPITTER, which is smartest person in the room. Now, if you think about the smartest person in the room, how do you typically identify the smartest person in the room? What do you What do you think? Go ahead, Patty. The person that can make the most connections. The person that can make the most connections. Exactly. It's the person that you know. Anytime the teacher says an idea, they're like, "Oh, I, you know, what? I can, I I read this magazine article about that, and then you know, last year I went on vacation and I saw something about that, or you know, me and my friends were just talking about that the other day." It's the people that like make a lot of connections to things and can make things relevant to their lives and relevant to everybody else's lives that often come across as the smartest people in the room. And so we want to train and becoming a smarter person isn't just a matter of being gifted that way. It's usually a matter of being able to make those connections. And we can train ourselves to make those connections. So when we think about, when we think about this, There we go. When we think about this, we want, to, we want to connect to the idea of writing. And on one side, we want to think about like how we write or how we're doing these things. But on the right-hand side, we want to think about why we're doing these things. So when you come in and write, and you're doing writing, you know, there's some requirements that I have for you guys, like certain things that I want to make sure that you're doing while you're writing. And Jack, would you go ahead and read that left-hand side for us? Don't just answer the question. Make connections to the ideas that are generated by the question. Write for the entire time. Make real life connections to past books, subjects in school, and personal experiences. That's right. So that's what I'm looking for you guys to do while you're writing. Don't just answer the question. There's going to be a question on the board, but I don't actually care about you answering the question. That's not what I'm shooting for. I'm not shooting for, you know, what did you do last summer? I went to Italy. Full stop end of discussion. No, that's not what I want out of your writing. I want you to make as many connections as you can. Because what we're, not, what we're practicing doing is not answering questions. We're practicing making connections in our brain. Okay, So you have to write, when you come in and there's a writing prompt, you have to write for the entire time until I say stop. That could be 10 minutes. That could be 15 minutes. And every time you, write, you get to where you think you can't go anymore, I want you to shift and go in a different direction with it. Every time you think you're done answering the question, think about what personal experiences you've had with it. Think about what personal experiences your friends have had with it. Okay, And start bringing that stuff in. Practice making those connections. Let's lead, read the part on the right-hand side. Tanishka, can you read that out loud for us? Why? We're not just answering questions. We're training our brain to make more connections. Making connections is used for a means of intelligence to become Okay, absolutely. So the purpose of our writing activities is to practice making connections because your, your brain forms what's called habits of mind. Your brain forms habits just like your entire body forms habits. You know, in, 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 just like these guys right here have formed some habits. You know, we know this is from, so it's not really a habit forming, but it gets across the idea. You know, if you think about these two guys and the difference in their habits, what's the difference in the habits of this guy versus the habits of that guy? What's the difference between those two, Mutas? Uh, I think the first one is like very lazy, and just or not weak, just very like not trained. So. Okay, and the guy on the right, help me out. Like Rizan. Yeah, he makes an effort with his body, right? Tanishka, go ahead. He trains his body to be like the way he wants it to, and the other guy really doesn't go out of his body. 
Exactly. And your brains do the same thing. Your brains do the exact same thing. Those of you that train your brains have a brain that really looks like that, and those of you that don't train your brains have a brain that looks like that. I mean, it's just, that's what happens between us. We end up looking like that guy or that guy, you know? That some people look like this on the outside, and they look like this in their brains. And some people look like this on the outside, but their brains are actually developed like this. It's all about what your habits are, the habits of mind. And what happens to this guy when he works out every single day and he wakes up the next morning? Does he want to work out? Yes, he does. The first day he wakes up and he says, I want to work out. And the same thing is true of your brain. When you practice thinking deeply and making connections, your brain develops that habit where your brain is asked a question and your brain is like, yes, I can't wait to make connections and think deeply about this thing. But if our brains are like this and we never push it and we get, a, get in a habit of letting our brains off the hook, our brains develop the habit of staying like that. And then you ask your brain a question, and it's like, I don't know. And then it quits. And we don't want that to happen. We want to train our brains to be like that and like, not like that. Because that's the nature of learning and thinking. So how do our brains learn in general? Our brains learn by, as we've already established, making connections. And I'll show this in scientific fact right here. This is an actual brain scan of an infant. When you are first born, you are born with all these little nodes in your brain, all these little spots, these little dots. And these dots are unconnected to one another. And these are potential, these are synapses in your brain, and there are more synapses in your brain than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, wow. There are billions upon billions upon billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy but there are more potential connections in your brain than all the stars in our galaxy. That's pretty impressive. But what about the universe? That's different. Probably more than the entire universe. So, as we experience things, every time you see something, your brain makes a connection. So every time you, know, you, you hear a sound, you hear music, your brain connects these, some of these synapses. Every time it sees a bird outside on a tree, it makes a connection between things. Every time it feels the wind, every time you feel the wind in your face, it makes a connection. If you feel multiple things, you make several connections. And gradually over time, these connections, our experiences, form the connections in our brain that form the neural networks that make up the way that we think. And then, when your brain is developed, the way that these networks are formed is the way that you will be able to think about problems. If you have a very advanced neural network and somebody asks you a question, your brain will search through all of these things and it has access to all of these experiences and all of these connections in order to form a deep answer to a question. So if you've got a question, you'll end up with a very complex output. But if your brain is over here and doesn't have a whole lot of connections that it's made and somebody asks you a question, that question goes in right here and it travels up this network and then it's done. There's nowhere else it can go. It can't connect to any other experiences. It can't connect into any other things. This is the difference between people that are able to think you know, complexly and people that think simply. It's a matter of, of connections that they formed in their brain, and that's often a matter of one of two things. Number one, experience. Okay? Experience forms a lot of connections. If you've traveled all over the world, you've had a lot more experiences, and you've seen a lot of different cultures and stuff like that. And if you have never left your town, you have not had those experiences. So how could you possibly form those connections? The other way that we form those connections is extremely important. It's reading. Nothing else you do forms connections, quite, uh, it forms connections as solidly as reading. Reading is one of the most important things that you can do for your brain as far as forming connections. But another thing to know about these connections is even if you form them, over time, they go away. They gradually go away, unless you use them. So everything that we read and experience forms connections, and those connections are made permanent by accessing them regularly, by talking about them and writing them. Every time you access a connection, you reinforce a connection. So what happens is gradually over time, if you've got a connection in your brain, the first time you experience it, if I tell you like, you know, um, uh, if I tell you that love is nothing but a chemical reaction, 
in your brain and it's not a real thing, okay? I told you that, and now that piece of information goes in your brain and it forms a very thin connection, you know? And then if you go to psychology class and they tell you the same thing, then that connection is reinforced and it becomes stronger. And then if you write an essay about it, that connection becomes extremely firm because you have had experience thinking deeply about it and researching it. So it becomes very permanent. Now, if I just said that one time, love is nothing but a chemical reaction and an illusion created by your brain, and it's not really a real thing. If I just said that one time and you were like, okay, all right, and then you went out in the world and never heard it again and never read it again and never did anything with it again, gradually over time you would lose that memory. It would go away. It would become thinner and thinner over time until that connection is completely lost. Oh, now we're happy. So, so we reinforce the connections in our brain by accessing them. So the more times I ask you to write about things and you practice making connections to things, the more time you're accessing your previous knowledge in order to make connections and form, a connection, form connections and reinforce connections and make sure that they are permanent in your brain so that you can use them later on as well. Yes, Patty? If, if you were to be told something like a lot, like um, and you wrote so much about it and researched a lot about it, mm -hmm. and it became, like the connection became so strong, mm -hmm. um, but then you stopped researching about it and stopped talking about it, mm -hmm. would it be able to leave? Um, there's a point at which you reinforce it so much it's not going to leave, but what it can do is it can go into the background. So you're not thinking about it all the time anymore. You know, somebody, like I did my graduate research. When I did a graduate research, uh, I did my graduate research on teaching grammar. I don't think about grammar day to day, but if somebody brings it up, I know how to talk about it intelligently because I've done so much research on it in the past and I've reinforced those connections. Okay, so moving forward. Here's what we need to know. Everything we read and experience makes connections, okay? And a brain that practices making connections forms dense neural networks that can be accessed whenever thinking about problems or ideas. So somebody that has this neural, neural network can think in a more complex way and come up with, more, uh, with better answers that connect to more things than a person with a neural network like this. Okay, so when we're, when we're practicing making connections, we're reinforcing our neural network so that we can think deeply about ideas. All right, so we want to think about how we can get above brain. How do we exercise our brains? How do we make sure that our brains get in the habit of being able to form connections? And the, one, the, the most important thing that we can do in here is continually practice making connections. And that's why when I give you guys writing prompts at the beginning of the class, the goal is not to just answer the question. The goal is to practice making connections to things. And we do that by going to the gym for our brains. You know, you go to the gym and you lift weights, boom, boom, boom. Well, this is the gym for our brains. So we come in and we've got a writing prompt and we say, all right, let's get our brains warmed up. And we warm up our brains by making all those connections and thinking as much as we can. And by forming that habit, we, by doing that practice, we form that habit, that habit of mind. And our mind gets in the habit of making connections to things when we're then asked a question. And that's a really important habit that affects your overall intelligence, your overall performance in school, and your lifelong ability to, you know, be the smartest person in the room, which is what I want you guys to be one day. I want you guys to be able to go in any room, and when people start talking about stuff, you're the smartest person in the room. Why? Because you're able to make connections, the most connections. Somebody asks you something and your brain automatically says boom, 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 and accesses everything that you know about it from the past. All right, so let me wrap it up real quick. I want to go ahead and go ahead and form in your mind a question that you have about this. Everybody form one question. 